name is Randy Neal, and I'm Vice President of CWT Industries. What we're going to show you today is the operational activity of our multi-valve 5000 balancing machine. We're going to go into some great details, but we're going to show you exactly what everything does here. For instance, on this particular shaft, this is a 302 Ford. Now, the one thing that's unique about it is that it's an external balance component. In fact, right over here we have the harmonic balancer that has a counterweight. We'll show you a little bit more about that later. But the same thing holds true on the flywheel. It has an external weight also. Now, in performance applications, a lot of times we remove those excess weights. And again, that's another discussion we'll have later. But also, we're going to point out the need for specific bob weights and what their function is related to the balancing operation. We're going to take all this as it's spun. And you can see this particular application. It's already given us a reading as to how far it's out of balance. In this particular case, it's shown 28.9 grams on the left side, and then, of course, 26.5 on the right. And what we would do is we would simply come up here on the left side, turn it up to TDC, and then we now know that this is the correction point, which we would bring over our drill, and again, we'll do this in the exercise, but we would go over here and select the drill, and it's telling us in this particular case, for a one-inch drill, 350 thousandths, and then by rotating it to the other side, we'll sit there and bring the TDC again, and we'll find, again with the one inch drill, 320 thousandths. Now that's a pretty simple process, but there are specifics here. For instance, a one inch drill won't be the best thing. So again, in later detail, we'll go back and just show you everything that we're gonna do to crank with specifics. Now one of the purposes that we have to do is we have to come in and we're gonna start with these bob weights and we'll start weighing, but let me explain the difference between a rotating situation and a reciprocating side. So as we, the engine rotates, this connecting rod basically goes through a gyration that there's a rotating mass and then there's a reciprocating mass. We have to separate that by weighing the rods. We'll also take the pistons, we're going to weigh them independently, and we're going to find out what their, what we call their dead weight is, the same thing with the rod itself, plus the rings, bearings. We well, even added as time and move on over to that. All right, now on this particular screen, what we're showing is You'll see the locations at TDC. Now that's just going to line up with the drill, but more importantly, you look at 26.57 grams, come down the screen, and right now we're setting up on, you can see the purple cat eyes, one inch diameter is the default selection, meaning that it's going to start with the assessment of a one inch drill. Now, with the other side, you're going to see point, or 0 0.32. That's 320 thousandths. Now, one thing you want to pay attention to is that we can select any drill size that we want. For instance, let's assume that the main bear, or excuse me, the counterweight is set up so instead of it being one and a quarter wide, it's only one inch, we couldn't use a one inch drill. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select three quarter and I'm going to close this and you'll see that the assigned depth has been changed now to 0.59. Now there's one other neat little trick here and that is if it's a virgin hole. In other words, in this particular case, there's no hole at all so there's no lead point to it we can actually activate DPC. That stands for Drill Point Compensation. Now you'll notice the enunciation and the depth has changed from 0.59 to 0.67. Again, this is compensating for the lead of the drill. To turn it off, you merely touch it again and it's back to 0.59. It's important that you understand this because you only get one time at this hole. You can't use DPC in a hole that's already drilled. So let's go ahead and close this one. And let's look at the other side. Even though the assigned position is not in at TDC, it still has already calculated the depth based on one inch. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to go over here and select 437 or 716. As soon as I close this, you're going to notice that we get an error. That error is simply telling you that you cannot drill with that small of a drill to the proper depth. We do have a remedy for this later, but we'll discuss that in what's called precision drill qualifying. Let's go back here for a minute, and let's just move up to size, and let's go to 5 8 Close it. Now you can see that we only have to drill one inch. So we've given you a couple of choices, and you can determine very quickly whether it's viable or not. All right, what we're going to do at this point is give you an overview of the screen. In other words, you see a whole series of colors and numbers and... Well, quite frankly, initially it's a little confusing. So let me explain what everything does. We're going to start right up here with first spin. Now, first spin, what that really does is once we have acquired data, and you'll see that already in the white boxes, what we're able to do is come in and touch that, and it's going to tell us that first spin information has been loaded. Now, what that's doing is going into the database for a final report. 
Now you notice it's gone away, so now it's waiting for another command. So we have the same opportunity over here with last spin, and in fact, if I hit that, and I'm just going to do this for this exercise, you'll see last spin information is loaded. Now what's wrong with this picture is the first and last spin will be identical. The assumption is that once we get to a finish point, let's assume we're down to a gram or so of imbalance, that's when we would hit last spin. So hitting at the same time, bad idea. Hitting first spin before there's any data is a bad idea because it would record zeros. So what you have to do is you have to spin the component up and then you have to wait for the data to be collected in these boxes and then you can basically log it in by touching the first spin or if it's a final spin, log it in with last spin. Now what are these white boxes? You notice we have two on each side. Now on the left side is the ounce inch tolerance. Now the ounce inch tolerance is truly the measurement that we really go for but you think of it in grams located on the right. For instance, 29.02 grams is also equivalent to 3.07 ounce inches at a 3 inch radius. All right, just to show you what that means, I'm going to change this to 1. And now 3.07 ounce inches is 87.09 grams. The way we got that, we know that a gram is 28.4 grams approximately in 1 ounce. By having it at one inch, we know that 3 times 28.4 will come to 87.09. We don't want you to do those mental gymnastics, so we merely put the radius in of the crankshaft where it's going to be corrected, and you would only take 29 grams out at the 3 inch radius. If your crank was only one inch in diameter, you would go ahead then, of course, set one, and you would take 87 grams out. But notice the whole time I've changed this, the ounce inch tolerance never changed. See it's always 307, 29 grams. So for instance if I went out here to 6 inches it would be 14.5 grams and it just means that more weight you have a little bit of a distance or a lever arm advantage and those grams will change depending upon the correction radius. The ounce inch is always a constant. Now let's go back here for a minute put it back at 3 and there we go. Now the same thing holds true on the right. These numbers do exactly the same. But now let's move down to the green areas. We call them the green cat eyes. The green cat eyes are set up first with the radius. The radius is the position that we modify, excuse me, where we would modify on the crankshaft to remove the weight. That is typically the outside edge of the counterweight. We'll show you that a little bit later in a different setup. The next thing we do is the left plane. The left plane is the distance from the left stanchion to the center point of the counterweight. Again, we'll illustrate that a little bit better. I just want you to know that that's what it does. Now the right plane is from the left stanchion coming all the way over to the right stanchion. In this particular case it's going to be a 17 inches. And then if I come back up the radius, typically counterweights on the left side and the right side are the same. The last number we put in for dimensions is going to be B to B. Now that stands for bearing to bearing. That's basically the distance that we're suspending the crank or in essence where the right stanchion is and the left stanchion is and the suspension distance is 19.25 inches. The last thing we do here is the tolerance. That tolerance is depending upon how close you want to balance. For instance, 1.5 is fairly common to street work. In other words, the grocery getter. Uh, 0.5 would be considered used for high performance street. Maybe a guy shoots a little nitrous. By the way, we like those guys because they always blow things up. That means you get to do the job twice. 